topic, we will discuss about blasting. Blasting is an operation that engineers resort to in order to break the rock mass and to facilitate the removal of the overburden material. Blasting is an operation that has safety, stability and economical viability issues and it's a science itself. First of all, blasting requires explosives. Different explosives have different power and different characteristics. In addition, we need other equipment like detonators and boosters to initiate, detonate and sequence the blast appropriately. But this equipment is not covered here. But let's see how the explosion leads to the rock breakage. The explosion is a chemical reaction that produces a shock wave and a large amount of gas that has high temperature and high pressure. The explosion leads to the rock breakage through three main steps that happen in a very short time. Firstly, the shock wave creates and extends the microfractures in the rock mass and initiates the breaking process. Then the gas expanding the drill hole under very high pressure exacerbates the damage with creation of radial cracking, as shown on this figure. The gas pushes on the rock to open and extend the cracks. Finally, the free rock phase is pushed by the explosive gas and deflects due to the detonation front, creating some flexural cracks as shown on this figure. This mechanism of breakage is best achieved if the explosive are confined inside a rock. To do so, a hole is drilled in the rock and a series of explosives are lower in the hole and stemming are placed in between and above the explosives to form a plug and confine the charge vertically. In this figure, we can see one hole but one charge is not enough, as large volumes of rock have to be dealt with in mining. A series of charges is typically used for better performances, as you can guess from this photo. Here, blasting is used to remove the overburden material. The holes are not drilled in a random pattern, but they result from a specific study aiming at designing the following. The diameter and the length of the holes in which the charges are placed, the stemming length, the spacing between the holes, the distance from the charges to the free face of the rock. In the concept of surface mine, blasting is used to create new free faces, but also to extend the faces in a later stage. This is illustrated in this figure, where stages 1 to 4 are used to lower the floor pit, but stages 5 and 6 are deployed to advance the wall. In all cases, blasting has to be controlled in order to avoid blasting-induced damage of the rock left standing. A solution to minimize the damage to the rock left standing is to split the rock first at the location of the wall before blasting the rock in front. The split will separate the undamaged rock constituting the wall from the material that will be removed. This line blasting operation is referred to as pre-splitting blasting. In this figure, you can see the trace of the holes where the explosives were placed and the resulting quite smooth rock surface. The presence of such half barrels are an indicator of reduced rock mass damage, but there may exist some damage in the remaining rock mass. The idea behind the pre-splitting technique is to maintain an appropriate sequence of the detonation. For example, if we have a rock mass that is overlaying a coal seam that needed to be mined, first we need to detonate the charges of the spray split in order to separate the rock mass that needs to be broken. Then we have to detonate the charges to obtain the breakage of the rock mass. In this way, the underlying seam coal can be mined. Timing of initiation is also important when trying to minimize the material handling post-blasting. In this figure, you can see a pile of rock created by blasting. If the initiation sequence and explosives are adequate, 
the rock is thrown away and forms the blue pile, giving access to the coal. This is referred to as cast blasting. If the timing is wrong, the yellow pile is formed, requiring the use of machineries and more material handling to get access to the coal. When designing blasting operation, rock characteristics such as strength and presence of discontinuity should we also be accounted for, as they will govern the amount of energy required to break the rock. To summarize, the key aspects of the blasting are the release of the appropriate charges at the right time in order to obtain the good break mechanisms. It is beyond this course to discuss the methodology to design the blasting elements. But if you want more details about blasting, I suggest you to go to the additional resources.